Hey Thumpers, welcome back to another trailer. Well, this is going to be a little different. This is going to be a trailer breakdown yeah. of Star Wars Rebels Season 4. It's been an amazing weekend for Star Wars Celebration. We've done a whole bunch of videos. Uh, I'm Adam Hlavik and I'm joined here with... Emma Fife. And we did a whole bunch of stuff. We did. We had a uh, live reaction mm -hmm. on Twitch, uh, both to the 40th anniversary panel and also the... Last Jedi panel in which the very first uh, teaser trailer was shown. That was a lot of fun. It was. It was a lot of fun. So you guys should definitely check those out. But now uh, we're going to do something a little different. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're going to watch the trailer for Star Wars Rebels Season 4. Then we're going to break it down and talk about some of the things that it's teasing, some of the things that it's showing. Um, what have you thought about this series so far? I really love it. Uh, one of the things that I've said a lot of times uh, on the various media outlets in which I have done some coverage for Star Wars Rebels is that to me... Seeing the first season of Rebels, which was very much a like, hey, we're going on this fun little journey with these mm -hmm. characters and didn't necessarily contribute so much to the, you know, galactic war as a whole right. until the very end where you suddenly went, oh, wait, like this is about to get serious. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, season two kicked off with Siege of Lethal and you knew that like it, it was going to spiral out of control from here <laughs> in a good way, in a good way. Yeah. But to me, watching those first couple episodes, I... Uh, I felt like, okay, to me, this feels like Star Wars, like mm -hmm. in a way that kind of the the prequel films almost didn't. Right. So watching it, I was like, okay, well, this makes me very confident that the new films are going to be good because mm -hmm. this is the first time that Star Wars has fully been in the hands of Disney. Right, yeah. I kind of felt the same way. Originally when this show came out, I was like, I don't want to watch the kid show. Yeah, this is yeah. going to be dumb. I don't know. It's probably not going to feel like Star Wars. I watched the premiere and I was hooked. Yeah, totally and I, sold. And then I binge watched the entire first season and there were little things that happened in that first season where Ezra goes through the trials, he goes mm -hmm. into the cave, we hear Yoda... I was hooked. I'm like, I mean, this is more Star Wars than anything. Darth I've Vader seen in the last is years. straight up in it, like yeah. right off the bat. Yeah, like Tarkin you get some Vader. Yeah. Oh my god, it's so awesome. So, and then with season three, you know, we introduced Admiral or Grand Moff, Grand Jesus. Admiral Thrawn, Grand Admiral yes. Thrawn, <laughs> a character who was in the sequel books originally. Then yeah. you know he's brought back. So many cool things have been going on in this series. Yeah. Now the third season had a little bit of a time jump. It did. Yeah. We jumped forward not as far in time as people were thinking think, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was only yeah. supposed to be like six months or something. Right, right. Uh, but yeah, That's I mean. puberty does to people. It does. It does. Yeah. Puberty hits you fast <laughs> and hard. Uh, yeah. Ezra got a haircut. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, they, they did. They jumped forward a little bit. And that was. And so the thing that I think is really interesting about sort of the path that Rebels has taken is it seems to me that now like Thrawn is going to be their main adversary. Yeah. And that is insane because Thrawn in the Timothy Zahn novels, which now there's now the mm -hmm. new Thrawn novel has come out, which is officially canon. But, you know, the character in Rebels is very similar to the character that he originally created right. in, in that trilogy of books mm -hmm. in that he's, you know, he's a strategist. He's an art collector. He's just like smarter than everybody. Yeah. So in this weird way, you kind of root for him. Oddly enough, you do. <laughs> yeah. That's the really interesting thing about that character. I mean, the way he's played, the way he's drawn and just like his mannerisms, he's so sneaky and dark, but there's like, there's this mystery wrapped around him that you're so intrigued by him every time yeah. he's on screen. More so than I feel like with characters like uh, Tarkin and even Vader to some extent. Sure. Because I think we know Vader so well. We do. And you can't really... There's nothing really with Vader that you can do too different without him feeling like Vader. Whereas with Thrawn, you have kind of flexibility to move around with him because he's not as well known it's true. as some of the other characters. But he's so intriguing. And he's so evil. Yeah. Like, But like he's evil in such an interesting manner like as i mentioned it's just he's so smart he's always one step ahead of you yep. he's planned everything out and the thing that i liked that they ended up doing in season three of rebels was eventually they kind of revealed that like his process of figuring out right. how mm -hmm. things were going like figuring out the location of the rebel base on mm -hmm. atalon mm -hmm. so instead of it just being like magically Thrawn knows everything yeah. it's like no like he legit was like oh this artwork is based on this thing and if yeah. you know anything about these people then it's you know this star system that's in here and oh look there's a secret planet like, yeah yeah what <laughs> you're like you're the best FBI agent we've never had yep thanks Thrawn yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> all right well let's watch this trailer okay I've seen I've seen little bits and pieces of it I haven't actually sat down and watched the whole entire thing okay I watched the whole thing yeah. uh, I'm too excited I was too excited I couldn't wait <laughs> but I 
I was also like, in, I feel like if I'd actually gone to Star Wars Celebration, I would have just been walking around crying the whole weekend. <laughs> so yeah, this, oh, this trailer's good. Well, really we good. need some tissues, okay. stat. Here we go. <laughs> It was a simple story about a boy who was lost. There's that haircut. Mm. <laughs> and a girl who was broken. They fought alongside a survivor, a war veteran, Chopper. The and best. a fallen knight. He's my favorite droid in all of Star Wars. That was Wars. one of my favorite scenes in yes. the last, this past season. Against an evil so terrible, it tried to black out this the stars. Movie. We fought for each other. We fought for those who could not. But we never imagined it would end like this. This is a time of difficult choices. Sometimes impossible ones. So oh, 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 as long as we're cool. together, we've got a chance. At least we'll go down fighting. All paths are coming together now. It's That's time awesome. to get to work. As Callus! Oh, we man. are the balance, Ezra. Dude does look like an uptight Imperial. We wanted no. to be Jedi so we could be here. You got that now. one hair out of place right? at the end of season three. When your thorn needs us like most. Him a lot. Yep. General Sindula. May the force be with you. Oh. Dang. <laughs> oh man. That's crazy. And yes. It's the final season. It is the final season. Oh. Yeah. I mean, the last uh. season brought us really close to Rogue One. Sure. Now, according to Dave Filoni, apparently the series isn't going to end at Rogue One. Right. So Which that, I don't think it needs no, to. No, I don't think it needs to either. Um, so it, it is going to sort of extend mm -hmm. a little bit beyond. Uh, but yes, in this season at some point, like Hera is going to become General Syndulla. I mean, she's right. pretty dang close at this point. I mean, but, I, 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 even though yeah. they don't really officially give her the title, I always kind of assume yeah. that that's kind of her. I mean, she, yeah. she's really the character who's kind of the... Um, Character we sympathize with the most, I yeah, feel like. Yeah, absolutely. She's really the through, like the through line of this entire story. She she's, everything that, she's the one who holds it all together, I feel like. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I mean, you know, she is the captain of the ghost, and, yeah. and she's the one who kind of brought everybody together yeah, and yeah. now is, is kind of carrying them through and also accepting that, you know, it's time to change and move on and let people right. go i mean sabine stayed behind on on um cronus yeah. one of the moons of mandalore mm -hmm. last season now she came back in the final episode right. to join in the battle mm -hmm. uh along with the rest of the mandalorians but yeah Ooh, that bendu be pissed too. Uh, i know and the bendu, be yeah, the bendu is like maybe dead yeah uh, i don't know that's a, that was a very like uh the ending was just like yes is the character gonna come back or yeah. that, to me that's like a i love the fact that they're going back to Things that were introduced or talked about in very early drafts of the Star Wars, all these ideas sure, about yeah. Bendu and this like this spiritual part of the Force and all that kind of stuff. And from what we saw from the Episode Eight trailer, it feels like they're really doubling down on that. Yeah, like, I agree. Seeing all those ancient like Jedi books and 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 Luke's sort of questioning of, of what the Jedi Order could right. be. Right. Well, and that. I mean, you know, even Kanan says in this trailer, you know, he has that moment where he's like, "We're here now because we have to restore the balance." Right. Right. But like, there's no way that this is going to end happily, <laughs> no. specifically for Kanan and Ezra. Exactly. I think that's the most interesting thing about this show is that they introduce all these characters. They sprinkle Chopper and Hera into Rogue One. Whether or not the mainstream audience will know and no. or care about that yeah. it doesn't matter. But for us, it tells us that that character survives. I almost beyond that stood up and applauded when they yeah, called General Sinoa exactly. over the like loudspeaker. Exactly. I think for me, the bit, the most interesting part is going to be what's going to happen to Ezra and Kanan. I agree. Is is are they both going to die? 
are they both going to die, period? What kind right. of death are they going to have? What kind of sacrificial thing are they going to do? And also, where's Sabine going to end up in all this? And even and even Zeb. Yeah. Like, two characters that I... Two supporting characters I love. Yeah. I love Sabine. I love Zeb. They're I do, too. Yeah, yeah, I definitely am, am a big fan of uh, both of those characters. And certainly, you know, we got to see in season two uh, a little bit with Zeb kind of experimenting mm-hmm. uh, with the use of the Force when there were, like, the Lethal elders and stuff. Right. But uh, the other... Uh, thing that I find very interesting about Zeb is his relationship with Agent Callus, mm-hmm. who, as we see in the trailer, right. is now definitely kind of like part of the Rebel crew because they managed to rescue him in the last so episode, cool. which I did not think he was going to make it. Now, apparently, awesome. they do actually call him, or Dave Filoni does now refer to him as Sexy Callus, um, <laughs> which is totally what I was calling him when that one hair fell out yeah, of place. Yeah, and apparently, yeah. that cost a lot of money to animate. Oh, so. Lord. There he is. Swap there he seat, is. Oh, where go is back. It? Go where back. Is it? Come on. There, there he is. is. Look at that. Dang. Well, it's funny because like I didn't see. I saw like an image of this. Yeah. And I was like, who is that? He looks so much like Cal. This is like a relative. Of his. <laughs> and then I saw the end and what was happening in the show, and I'm like. Oh, oh, that is Callus. Yeah, that's With that Rebel Callus. Just like, yep. I'm too cool for the Empire. Yep. Bye. Yep. And now he's like going full beard yeah. instead of just having the mutton chops. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. from the looks of this, we're going to see more of Yavin. Yes. Which I think is really going to be really cool because they did say that Mon Mothma, I believe Mon Mothma is definitely going to be in back. this. Mm-hmm. Um, is Bail Organa? I assume. Yeah, I assume Bail Organa. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's going to be interesting to see how, even though it's not ending right where Rogue One starts, to see what sorts of things are going to happen that are going to, yeah. going to lead to this, especially when we meet Diego Luna's character, <sighs> uh, Cassian Andor. We already know that there are things happening that are sort of uh, trickling out into the sure. into the ether of space that the Death Star is being built. What is, kind of storyline? Is there going to be a storyline that ties that into Rebels? Yeah. That's going to be really interesting. I hope so. Well, and I also like, too, that, you know, in the very beginning of season three, they did not waste any time. They brought... Uh, saw Guerrera in, you know, right yeah. away. So, well, yeah. it was it was the halfway point of season right, three. So basically, right. as soon as Rebels came back in January of this year, they're like, hey, remember Saw Guerrera? He was in Clone Wars. And then we put right. him in this movie Rogue One. And here he is. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there is kind of this gap of, okay, what what has Saw Guerrera been doing right. in, in the time? that Because when we see him in Rebels, like he's on the path to mm-hmm. becoming the totally unhinged yes. character yes. that we meet in Borgullet. Rogue One. Borgullet. Uh But he's not completely there. Right. So it'll be really interesting to see that portrayed in Rebels. Right. And I think with bringing back Mon Mothma and seeing in Rogue One how much of an extremist that he's labeled to be. Yeah. I think we're definitely going to see some kind of relationship or falling out between him and the Rebel Alliance, which I think is going to be really interesting. Um, Do you think that they will actually put Rogue One characters into the show? Do you think we'll see Cassian and or another character? If we were to see anybody, my guess would be that we would see Cassian. Mm -hmm. I wonder if it would be a a similar situation to, okay, we're just going to get a little bit, of him because they're very big or, you know, Dave Filoni and the other producers on Rebels, they're very, very big about like not detracting from the characters that they already, that they've created specifically for Rebels. Like it is absolutely their story. But that being said, you can naturally, you know, have people like Saw Gerrera show up or they, you know, incorporate characters from Clone Wars whose stories didn't get resolved. So obviously like Darth Maul was brought back in Clone Wars and they resolved his stories and his story in Rebels, Captain Rex, Ahsoka, you know, and you get your, your fun occasional like cameo from uh, Hado Onaka. Yeah. yeah. Uh, And then of course, Shams shows up at one point. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Yeah. And then of course, Shams and Dula because he's Hera's dad. Right, right. Um, But I, I, so that being said, they definitely in the shows, they assume that you're watching the films, right. whereas the films don't assume that you're watching the animated series. Exactly. So I do think that especially there's a good chance we might see Cassian. Yeah. Well, plus, I think like the thing that Rebels and Clone Wars did so well is like they these shows are very much a complement to what the movies are. doing. Yeah. And I love the fact that like. You're right. If you aren't watching these shows, you're not necessarily lost when you watch the movie. 
But if you are watching the movies and you love and you love Star Wars altogether and yeah. you want to watch more of what Star Wars is, then you can watch the stuff and you have you kind of have like a year round cycle of Star Wars. Yeah, basically. it's super true. I, I just had a thought, though, yeah. that like I desperately want to see an encounter between K2SO and Chopper. Oh, like, that my would be God. amazing. Well, I think it would be really cool if by the end of the show, we actually see that whole thing happen of K2SO being brought into the rebellion and reprogrammed. Oh, maybe, that's how, maybe that's how we meet. You know, that's how we see Cassian Andor. Just one shot of Cassian Andor. That would be so bomb. That'd I would love. Cool. I would love a droid episode. I. This is a, a controversial opinion. Some <laughs> people hated uh, the droid centric episode. Mm -hmm. uh, there were two droid centric episodes this last season. Um, one of them was the uh, what are they called? They're like assassin droids. That's mm -hmm. not what they're called. But you guys, you guys know what I'm talking <laughs> about. They come in and uh, they like infiltrate the base and at first it's like a really old protocol droid and they're mm -hmm. like whatever this is nothing and then it yeah. like tries to kill everybody and it's a great <laughs> episode of zeb and the droids yeah. and then in the next one it's again uh focused on ap5 who oh my god like greatest protocol droid yeah, in yeah. all of star wars uh it's steven stanton who does the voice of uh moff tarkin and mm. he was also uh the voice of uh of mature uh, alec guinness obi-wan in right, rebels that's right, that's right. uh and um as well as the uh mon calamari uh commander from uh rogue one. Oh yeah i'm uh, totally drawing a blank uh, on the oh name of the God. character uh, it'll come to us it'll come to us or or you guys will yell at us in the comments about what it is they'll <laughs> yell at us it's uh, escaping me right yeah, now uh, but anyway so um and he and he does the voice of ap5 it's very like um oh my gosh uh Professor Snape, mm. you know who I'm talking uh, about. Alan Rickman. Alan Rickman, Alan Rickman yeah. yeah. It's like very like Alan Rickman, like morose. He's so, <laughs> so funny. And legit, he like gets cast off into space and sings a song. And I loved it. It was such a well-written episode. It was so fun. You got great character development from both AP5 and Chopper. Mm -hmm. So I think it would be really fun to see another Droid Centric episode wherein we do get K2SO and yeah. we get him reprogrammed. Yeah. Especially because we are seeing them have encounters with Imperial Droids. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, AP5 himself was an Imperial Droid. Yeah. It would be amazing. It's the first amazing. step towards that, I feel like. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would say that Chopper crazy it's really crazy because i did not expect that from this show Chop, chopper probably became my favorite droid i mean Even Chop more so than bb because chopper is like chopper is the anti-bb8 totally. bb8 is like chopper so is cute and like it. and he does a little high five and he right, rolls right, around right. he's really precious and chopper's, chopper's like just, smacking yes. ever upside the head i'm like i love this yeah droid. chopper is ornery and stubborn yeah. and he just like i i just i love him he is the highest kill count i think of <laughs> yeah, anybody think so. in all of star wars rebels do you think that we will see obi-wan kenobi again i don't no nope Absolutely not. Uh, I love the way that that story ended uh, last season. Yeah. I thought that that final confrontation that even though I had problems with the episode as a whole, sure. I thought the final confrontation between Obi-Wan and Darth Maul was perfect. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I don't, I don't think we're going to see Obi-Wan again. If we do, it'll be like at the very, very end. Sure, and it'll sure, just sure. be like a little, kind of yeah. like you just saw the Luke running the, home I that was in great. silhouette. It was brilliant. That was great, it was though. brilliant. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw something else like that, but mm. I don't think we're going to get another no. Obi-Wan story. Uh, and that's the thing is like, I love the character of Obi-Wan Kenobi and I think he's great. I thought what they did with twin sons with him and Darth Maul was a really, really great moment. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, he's not a character that I want to be like, and I think they're very aware of that. It's sure, like, you're sure. not going to take Obi-Wan Kenobi off of Tatooine, put him on missions with his crew because it's the final season and we want to do this big. We want to go big. Right. It's like, let Obi-Wan Kenobi be the guy in the desert who's kind of just there. And I think we did what we need to do with him. Let's focus on wrapping up the storylines of the main characters. Yeah. Let's see what Saw Gerrera kind of plays into this, how his relationship with the rebellion right. kind of breaks apart. What Agent Callus is going to do. Yeah. What we're going to do with Thrawn. I mean, there's so many things. Uh, and also, obviously, as we see in the trailer, the return of Bo-Katan. Yeah. Uh, now, Katie Sackhoff had semi-confirmed that she was going to be in Rebels. Um, mm. And uh, everybody thought she was going to show up last season. Everyone right. was thinking like, oh, maybe she's Sabine's mom. And I'm like, I really don't think she is, though. What I think she is, mm. is she's going to become the leader of the Mandalorians. Whoa. That's what I think. Because okay. she's like that nice balance between, you know, her sister, Duchess Satine, who yeah. was, you know, the leader of the new Mandalorians. And she was very, uh, she was all about pacifism mm. and neutrality. And obviously, like, Prey Vizsla had an issue with that in the Death Watch. And Bo-Katan was part of Death Watch. Like, yeah. she was part of his crew. But she kind of had a change of heart after her sister was killed. And mm -hmm. she helped Obi-Wan escape. 
I really think that like she is the right because Sabine says because Sabine has the dark saber now right. and she's like I don't think that I'm the one to lead Mandalore but yeah. I'm gonna find who it is yeah, and yeah. then because bo didn't show up this season I'm like oh it's gonna be her <laughs> so I really hope it is I, I, I just love her that's and again that, that goes back to what I love that both this and Clone Wars are doing they're exploring territories that I think we've always wanted to see yeah the Mandalorians I think originally the Clone War was supposed to be about the Mandalorians that was what like I think the original concept was back in the 70s sure sure yeah and it, it kind of ended up not being that it became it kind of what became the clone army yeah. the stormtroopers which is fine and it, and it was but actually Mandalorians is like something yeah. I always wanted to see well and also you know in again like the whole sort of like old republic is vague because a lot of what is like known about it is legends so like right, as far right, as the right, stuff right, that's right. canon goes all we really know is that you know at some point there was this Mandalorian civil war essentially right. where there was infighting and the Jedi intervened and mm -hmm. a lot of people died and it was it was just not it was not a good time yeah yeah so, so. I mean they're, they're so I, I think this last season is probably going to be them doing a huge send up to a lot of these characters wrapping yeah. a lot of stories but I think also sprinkling things out for things that will eventually oh, show up in the movies Gallus. oh man <laughs> that so hairdo excited. though uh, do you think we'll do you think we'll see more of the Bendu do you think the Bendu story has kind of reached its limit I that was a, such an interesting concept. I know, and I and good lord, I love Tom Baker. Like, yeah. come on, oh, there's Hera in that freaking so good X-wing pilot suit. I love it. Uh, you know, with, with the Bendu, I because mm, again, it's like it seems kind of like Thrawn killed him, right? At the end, but is he something that can really be killed? I exactly. mean, he turned into a storm. Yeah, exactly. So, Which was oh, crazy that when that happened, I was not expecting that. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's a very interesting character. And, yeah. I, and I think that could like, that could really speak to what maybe the future movies are going to For sure. To on? I don't know. So I, I, I think my feeling about the Bendu is he's definitely someone that we could see again even if it's just in like flashbacks sure. to the time that kanan spent with him as kanan's mm -hmm. kind of coming to this understanding of what his role is Ugh. yeah these two. Oh my god kanan and hera i Ship mean it, damn it. listen listen like obviously leia and han are like my star wars otp sure, but sure, like sure. God, these guys are a close they're seven. Great. They're great. I mean, uh, just from the first time you see them, you're like, there's tension between these two. And yeah. I love it. Yeah. I want to see how this plays out. For oh, the my next God. Season. Oh, it's so great. Well, and like in uh, the book New Dawn mm -hmm. that explains like how they met, like Kanan's just Kanan's kind of like drifting through the galaxy. You kind of get the impression, too, that like Kanan's sort of a ne'er-do-well, uh, <laughs> which is great. But like he meets Hera and he hears they talk about like how sexy her voice is. And mm. he's like, I must have her. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah i'm really looking forward to season four um I, yeah. i'm now i think now i'm gonna go back and because like i'm kind of spotty with with rebels with this past season i've seen i think i've seen about 80 percent of the episodes and yeah. i've kind of jumped around to just kind of stay somewhat caught up with what's been happening but season one and two i really really enjoy but yeah. i would love to go back and just do a marathon i feel like this is this is a show that's very easy to marathon it's it's yeah. 30 minutes and at least the first season wasn't as long. The second two seasons are longer with 20 plus episodes. Yes. But it's such an enjoyable show to watch. It really is. And I mean, especially the first season, I want to say, because I started keeping up with it on a weekly basis mm -hmm. uh, once season two came around. Mm -hmm. And I just binge watched the whole first season. And yeah. it was, I, I think I did it all over the course of like two days because I mm -hmm. just was so delighted to really feel like i was watching star wars again and i yeah. was being introduced to all of these great new characters who i really cared about because i mean that was yeah. the thing that's the thing that's interesting about rebels is you know clone wars obviously introduces a a bunch of new characters who we end yeah. up caring about so much who again many of them have carried over right. to rebels most notably uh captain rex and ahsoka tano people want a ahsoka tano movie so oh bad. my god well and then i and that's the other thing is it's like are we gonna see that's ahsoka? true i forgot about that yeah and i think we have to i think so because you guys nobody no death you know what i mean like uh, ain't nobody dead till you see one yeah mm -mm. yeah yeah i'm i'm excited to see how that wraps up and if I think doesn't Dave Filoni say that Ahsoka Tano is like his favorite character? I I, I mean so. she was she's like the most 
significant yeah. original character that he created. I, yeah. I mean, he's created so, so many wonderful characters. But Ahsoka, if you think about it, she's interacted mm -hmm. with basically every major, major character, character yeah. in the Star Wars films, particularly in the prequels. But yeah. so many of the characters in the prequels carry over to the original trilogy. Totally. So it's so crazy to me to think that there are people who are fans of of Star Wars mm -hmm. who don't know this unbelievably important character. Character exists, I know. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I feel like that's the one thing about the movies that I wish, like, in a perfect world, if right. they would have kind of timelined everything perfectly, we could have had Ahsoka Tano show up in a movie at some point. Yeah, that yeah. That to me would have been like, oh man, if only we could have had her in episode three or ha had her in Rogue One. But because of the fact that like we have Star Wars Rebels taking place before Rogue One, we've got episode three taking place at a point where we can't have Ahsoka Tano. It's like, yeah, oh, I know. Oh. I know. Now, now I'm just like at the edge of my seat, like what is going to happen yeah. with this character? So yeah, that's why I feel like she could get a movie. Oh, totally. Um, and also in the Ahsoka novel, she does spend time on Mandalore, which right. obviously we're going there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, she's beyond that point at the at when we meet her as Fulcrum in mm -hmm. season one and right. then officially in season two. Right. So, uh, but still, I feel like there's there's definitely a possibility that I'm she's... Gonna end, I'm just going to end on Sexy Callus. Yes, why not, why Sexy not? Callus. Um, one thing, I'm, I'm going to look it up on my phone because mm -hmm. I cannot remember the character's name. Uh, but basically, in the um, Timothy Zahn Thrawn novels, he has sort of this accomplice uh, who yes. is going to be in uh, season four yeah, of Rebels. Yeah, and Warwick, Warwick Davis is going to be Yeah, the yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, hold on, hold on. I can't on. remember. Uh, um, Rebels season four. Star Wars names. They're always there. So, I know. Forget. It's so true. It's so freaking true. Uh, da -da. Yeah, I mean, I love the imagery. I, I think the one thing that the show has done so beautifully is the animation. It's 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 weird because it's like a simple style, but it has so much detail and definition yeah. that it doesn't feel like a lot of stuff that I've seen before. And I think Clone Wars also like kind of set the trend for that. Um, it's got this 3D look, but it still feels in, in some regards like 2D. And I think it's because of how they layer all the shots and how they compose and the backgrounds. And is it this character? Yeah, I think so. I'm trying to... I can't remember. It's what... one of those things where like, especially with the, the like old novels and again it's it's been a while since i've read oh yeah i haven't read Air of the empire since i was in like middle school exactly <laughs> so like i d and again it's like i i don't think i had a really clear image of thrawn in my head right and then you know you saw the artwork of him and i was like oh, okay yeah and then what rebels did with it i thought mm. was really good uh by the way i never returned that book to my old uh <laughs> local library so, so you still have it i still have it and nice. i don't even want to know what's going to happen if i try to go back there and be like i uh rented this or i checked this book out back in 1999 or 2000 yeah how much do i owe you oh fifty thousand dollars i'll keep the book thank you yeah um that's so funny. There? Uh, this came up so easily when it dropped, and now like now I cannot like, find it. Warwick Davis, who are you voicing? All right, Warwick Davis, uh, Star Wars Rebels. Also, the one thing that I at Star Wars Celebration that they, even though they announced this is the last season of Rebels, they didn't announce what new show kind of be taking its place. Yes, so that I'm, is definitely him. So I'm curious to see like what Dave Filoni is going to do after Rebels. Yeah, I, I'm, well, this is, this is the thing. Uh, uh, oh, Rook, that's his name. Rook. Yeah, R-U-K-H. Mm. Oh, man. I was like, I know it's really simple. Yeah. But yes, that is, that is him. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a theory about that. So, uh, as we know from the coverage of Star Wars Battlefront, the new game is actually going to be a canon story that takes place after Return of the Jedi. I think that another animated series mm -hmm. might fall in between Jedi and Force Awakens. Let me tell you something. There's 32, <laughs> there's 32 years of history between yeah. episode six and episode seven. Give me some. I shit. agree. I would want to either see that or I would want to see um, an old Republic series. Let's, let's that would be cool. make that stuff canon. You yeah, know? that let's... actually would be really cool. Plus, I think the thing that you brought about Battlefront 2, I love the fact that we're going to see, if they were to do the next thing, I honestly would love to see it told from the point of view, from the perspective of the Empire. Sure, and yeah. I thought, I thought that was the cool thing about that Battlefront 2 trailer was like, yeah, what happened to all those Imperials once the Death Star and the Emperor were destroyed? Yeah. Where did they go? What happened? Because we know from the Heir of the Empire, 
Thrawn kind of took over and it was like a reestablishment of the of the of exactly the Empire. we don't have that now no we don't so what yeah what's I, now I don't be the I mean story? I, I feel like there's no way Thrawn's gonna make it past rebels because otherwise he would have been important in exactly. the original trilogy so like exactly. Thrawn is going to die yeah. or something terrible something, something. <laughs> yeah. but there's so many possibilities yeah. with the Star Wars. that's what that's I think why I love it so much yeah it's really never ending no it really isn't and that's the thing is you know it, it you they have this whole universe and obviously there were all these novels that mm -hmm. were the expanded universe and are now considered to be legends right. but they're kind of you know starting to incorporate those characters and they're taking like the good yes. pieces out of there and incorporating them into new canon right which is the thing that like I was never upset about that because as someone who loves Star Wars, I didn't keep up with all the books, no. all the comic books. No. It's just impossible. You can't expect a brand new fan to do the same. But they did always say, like, if there is a piece of Star Wars lore from Legends that we feel like could be very important, beneficial mm -hmm. to the new canon, we'll use it. They did it with Thrawn. They've yeah. done it with, with all the things they've done with Clone Wars and Rebels and Rogue One and all yeah. these stories. And I, I think it's great. So yeah, I I'm very too. excited. Yeah, I cannot I'm, wait for I'm excited. I am ready to just have my heart ripped out because, <laughs> again, there's no way that this ends happily. I mean, not yeah. in the traditional sense of happy. Not Star so. Wars happy. Yeah. Anything, everything in Star Wars ends tragically, mostly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but thanks so much for doing this. Yeah, this thank you. This was fun. great. I'm so excited so uh, for the next wait. season of Rebels. I, I'm sure it'll air uh september or october that's typically yeah. uh when it does and uh yeah i can't i cannot wait to see <laughs> i don't know if my <laughs> the downfall of these characters feelings can handle makes it, it. i know yeah so yeah. many emotions but guys oh. let us know in the comments below what you think about star wars rebels what you thought about this trailer what are some storylines you want to see wrapped up what cameos do you want to see i'm so curious to see what people want to see what characters yeah. want to see cameo in this uh in this final season. Oh, oh, I can't believe we're already here. I know. Uh, one that I know people have been uh, Twittering about, mm -hmm. uh, specifically at me, is apparently in Clone Wars, it was planned that there was going to be a showdown between Boba Fett and Cad Bane that they never got a chance to oh. do. So, like, I don't know if that would fit into this, but I would love to see it. Boba Fett is a character that could totally show up. Yeah. Yep. Ah! <laughs> oh my god oh my god yep. all right oh lord emma where can everybody find you you can find me all over the internet at my name emma fife e-m-m-a-f-y-f-f-e -F -F -E. i'm sure you can see how to spell that in a lower third also if you guys like star wars and i'm sure you do because you're watching this and this is a star wars thing over on our twitch channel twitch.tv slash hyper rpg every friday night at nine o'clock p.m pacific time we actually play a star wars role-playing game our show is called pencils and parsecs we play the edge of the empire role-playing system from fantasy flight it is so much fun uh our story takes place uh after new hope but before uh, uh before uh empire, empire strikes back uh so the death star has been destroyed a little while ago and uh I, and you know your donations uh affect how the game goes like literally donations from people on twitch is affecting the fate of our personal version of the star wars universe it is so much fun so you guys please 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 come check that out uh i think you'll really have a good time that's a dark end of the galaxy to go down <laughs> it is, oh, and it's been oh, it's, so it's been though. rough lately it's been <laughs> i had a very emotional episode the last episode uh you guys can just find me at adam Lavic. i'm doing stuff here on the youtube channel and i'm doing stuff on twitch cineverse and every Tuesday from 8 to 10 p.m. Come hang out with us. It's always a good time. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next review. Bye. Bye.